Hi everyone, my name is Jorit Pritschke and I work for the Rubin Museum of Art in New York City. Our museum is dedicated to sharing art and ideas from the Himalayas into the broader world. And in our video series over the past few weeks, we've taken inspiration from our collection and invite you to make connections to your own lives. And we hope that this art and these ideas can help you navigate your lives in a new way. This week, we've invited artists from the Himalayan region. And today we are looking at a series of four photographs by Gonkar Gyatso that explore notions of individual and collective identity across both time and space. In each photo, we see the artist with a canvas on a stretcher looking directly into the camera. They are based on a photograph of the 13 Dalai Lama senior Tonka painter taken by Charles Cutting in 1937. In the first image, Gyatso is in traditional garb and painting a commonly depicted figure, Buddha Shakyamuni. In the second photo, we find him painting clad in a Mao uniform, a portrait of the Chinese communist leader Mao Zedong, the walls plastered with newspapers. And next, we see the artist in a makeshift space. We see a suitcase with a free Tibet sticker and a beer case from India. And in the last photo, we see the artist envisioning himself as a global contemporary artist, working from a studio that could well be in New York City's Chelsea neighborhood. Gonkar Gyatso grew up in Tibet during the Cultural Revolution, but as the son of an official trained in traditional arts in Beijing. And when he eventually returned back to Tibet in the early 1980s, he saw his understanding of Tibetan culture, history, and identity greatly challenged by what he experienced. He subsequently joined the Tibetan exile community in Dharamsala, India, and eventually settled in the UK. We may be tempted to read the series as a progression of Gonkar's personal journey, his take um, on identities in fact multifaceted and open to ever-changing times cultural shifts, consumerism and globalism, and it also embraces contradiction. Even though the My Identity series is now more than 17 years old, many of the questions raised in the photos remain valid and unresolved. What are the identities of Tibetans in exile? Is there such a thing as a Tibetan identity? In some ways, Gonkar embraces the impermanence and ever-changing nature of identity and invites us to do the same. And here today, taking inspiration from Gyatso's My Identity series are members of the Yakpo Collective, a group of Tibetan diaspora artists that aim to challenge stereotypical representations of the Tibetan culture. They explore how their experienced and perceived identities influence their work. And they also invite us to reflect on how evolving identities can support personal growth. Hi, my name is Tenzing Andutsung. I'm a part of the Yakpo Collective. My role at Yakpo is managing the team and also being a liaison and coordinator for some of our events. We are so happy to be a part of this series and very, very excited to share our perspectives on the impermanence of identity. So Yapo Collective was founded around a year ago in hopes to represent and challenge what Tibetan art looks like, while simultaneously encouraging our artists to challenge themselves and the works that they produce by exploring the ways in which their Tibetan identities have shaped them. We also wanted to create this dialogue on the intersectionality of Tibetan identity, age, and experiences through our art. And our purpose is to showcase how multifaceted we are, because although we do fall under this umbrella term of being Tibetan, it doesn't necessarily mean that we all grew up with the same experiences. We also took this inspiration from Gonkar's artwork and his series of self-portraits are all different. However, again, relate back to this overarching Tibetan identity. So here's how our artists have expressed their evolving and multifaceted identities through their works. Hi everyone, Desh Sule. My name is Bima Dora and I'm a photography and journalism double major at NYU. 
Um, for me, identity comes in two forms. There's the internal and personal identity, which is, you know, who you are essentially when no one's around. And then there's also the external and physical identity, which is how others perceive you. And I think so often we're trying to cater to others' perspectives of us, you know, whether it be your families or your friends or even strangers, that we tend to lose focus of trying to understand ourselves better. And so my self-portrait series aims to really explore the parts of myself that I didn't pay as much attention to and hone in on my journey of physical, emotional, and mental growth from when I started, which was my freshman, my first semester of my freshman year in college. And, um, you know, you can imagine the state of chaos and sort of vulnerability that I was in. Um, anxiety levels were at its peak and just I was reevaluating everything from, you know, who I was to who I wanted to be and what I wanted to be and sort of how I wanted to pursue it. And so to be able to step out from behind the camera and become my own subject and document these moment, pivotal moments in my life and these questions has really helped me now, you know, appreciate the personal growth that I've accomplished. I think it's very different from, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror or like taking selfies on your phones because you're always in motion and you know it's hard to sort of reflect on yourself in those times and so to be able to confront uh, yourself with a photograph of yourself I think it's almost daunting but kind of necessary to be able to you know recognize the changes that you're going through and for me this project has really helped me sort of identify my strengths and weaknesses my likes and dislikes you know it has logged all my experiences from bad haircuts to um, bad relationships and just yeah um i think it's even helped me really gain a confidence that i lacked and avoided at one point to now where i can appreciate myself a lot more and you know acknowledge that these experiences are you know who the moments that build your character really hi my name is tk and i'm an interactive design major at the school of visual arts and i'm also the event coordinator and one of the artists at yapo collective so today I'll be talking about my piece called Juk and Damne. Juk is a Tibetan word for dragon and in Tibetan Buddhism it represents strength, creativity, and wealth. And the Damne is a Tibetan version of a lute. So growing up, Damne was a really big part of my life. I attended music class every Sunday for six to seven years. And it was a lot of fun meeting friends and mentors and traveling everywhere to perform. It was also a great way to learn more about my culture in hopes to preserve it for future generations. So yeah, it was a really significant part of my life. But I took a step back and I knew that it wasn't my ultimate path. So I stopped attending those classes. And from that time forward, I kind of sparked a realization in me about the theme of impermanence of identity. So identity for me is an abstract idea of all the components and experiences that make you who you are. And everyone has different versions of themselves, including me. The person I was 10 years ago is definitely not the person I am today. And I can even say the same for the person I was two months ago. One part of my identity that I've moved forward from is music. It is no longer on the top of my priority list and that's something I'm okay with because not all experiences are meant to last. A lot of them are just meant to stay in your life for a certain period of time. And even though music isn't really a big part of my life anymore, I still really value that part of my identity growing up. Hello, my name is Tenzing Hamo Dorji and I am a cartoonist, illustrator and designer here in Seattle, Washington. As a child of two immigrant parents, learning my Tibetan language was the most important thing I have to learn. They'd always say, speak Tibet, Pamel. It's the thing that connects to myself to my elders. But over the years, it became much more difficult to understand Tibetan. I feel it's an issue that transcends to even other first generation kids. Anytime it gets brought up in a conversation, it brings up a lot of anxiety. Thus, my identity as a true Tibetan is always questioned. I wanted to capture that feeling through my comics and try to connect with others. I'm never really good with words. And so I feel my comics are the thing that 
ex puts myself in a visual way. Hello everyone, Tashdele. My name is Tsela, and I'm the founder of Yakpo Collective. I'm an artist and a graphic designer. Today, I want to show you my self-portrait titled Mistaken Identity. It's a self-portrait inspired by my experiences growing up as a queer Tibetan and how people have viewed me in different ways, where most of the time their assumptions of who I am have been mistaken. What's interesting in exploring your own identity is that as you move from one place to another, or as time passes, you come across different understandings of yourself. You're constantly learning things about yourself and your own feelings. Growing up in South India and then moving to New York City, I had to learn to embrace my Tibetan identity. And then later along the way, I had to learn to embrace my queer identity. I came across a journey of self-discovery where I realized that the way I represent myself doesn't really meet society's norms. And you certainly see all these aspects in my self-portrait. All the elements, such as the halo, the mask, the suit and tie, represent the things I experience on a daily basis. The most prominent being the suit and tie. Because oftentimes in public, people mistakenly call me by sir or he. And this reflects the fact that although I do have masculine features and traits, I also have a certain personality that is feminine and calm, which is represented by the halo. But of course, your identity never really stays stagnant, as people often assume that my nature is quiet and polite. What they don't see is that I can also express feelings of wrathfulness which is represented by the Tibetan wrathful mask. I believe that different circumstances bring out different behaviors and feelings in people. Therefore, exploration of your own identity never really stops, just as a root grows underground. It later comes above the soil, and then it becomes a beautiful plant with many branches and leaves. So we, as Yako Collective, would like to thank you for watching and we also would like to leave you with that thought. So because this was so much fun for us, um, Yapu got inspired to create our very own self-portrait challenge. And we want to continue this conversation of identity over on our page at the Yapu Collective. And we challenge everyone to create a piece that represents themselves. Get your friends and families in on it. Tag us with the hashtag Yapu Self. For those who don't feel comfortable with their pieces being showcased on our page, totally okay. Feel free to still reach out to us via DM. And again, thank you so much for tuning in today, everyone.